By now, you know what enzymes are, how do they work, and what environmental factors can affect their activity. Let's now review other mechanisms that cells use to regulate how their enzymes work. First, let's quickly remember a few key concepts related to enzymes. Remember that enzymes transform substrates. This is an enzyme. And this is the enzyme substrate. And, this is the active site of the enzyme, which is where the substrate binds so it can be transformed. When the substrate fits the active site, then the enzyme can do its job, and catalyzes whatever reaction needs to happen to the substrate. When the substrate does not fit the active site, then the enzyme cannot do its job. And there is no enzymatic action. With that in mind, let's talk about how enzymatic activity can be regulated by molecules called inhibitors. Enzyme inhibition. Let's talk about how cells control the action of enzymes. There are two common ways in which cells can regulate enzymatic action, using molecules that either compete with the substrate for the active site, or attach to other parts of the enzyme, resulting in the loss of activity. When a molecule competes with the substrate for the active site, it actually prevents the substrate from binding, therefore preventing the enzyme from doing its job. This type of inhibition is called, competitive inhibition. The molecule that competes with the substrate for the active site is called competitive inhibitor. The key to remember this is that both the substrate and the inhibitor molecule have a very similar structure, which allows the inhibitor to fit neatly in the active site. The other type of enzyme inhibition that involves the binding of a molecule to the enzyme is called non-competitive inhibition. In this case, a molecule binds to the enzyme in a way that it changes its three-dimensional structure. This change affects the structure of the active site and the substrate can no longer bind to it. In both cases, competitive and non-competitive inhibition, the end result is the same. The enzyme can no longer do its job, but the mechanism of inhibition is different. Try to draw a diagram by yourself and try to explain the difference between both types of inhibition. Once back in the lab, discuss these differences with your classmates. Now, let's talk about a different way that cells use to control their enzymes. Instead of using other molecules to inhibit the action of enzymes, cells can also control the amount of the enzyme itself that will be available to catabolize reactions. This type of control is called control by synthesis. Enzymes don't last indefinitely, and eventually, they degrade, and the cell must replace them. How much enzyme is made depends upon the demand for that enzyme. Let's see how control by synthesis works. All proteins that a cell will ever make are encoded in its DNA. Since enzymes are all proteins, with the exception of ribozymes, they are also encoded in the cell's DNA. The instructions to make an enzyme must first be encoded in a different molecule, RNA, so that ribosomes can decode it, read it, and finally synthesize the enzyme. For control by synthesis to work, something must happen to the DNA, so that the entire process of making the RNA encoding the enzyme is interrupted. In this animation, you see the enzyme metabolizing its substrate and a product being made. Sometimes, the product can accumulate in excess, and when that happens, the molecules of product themselves can bind to the DNA, and block the mechanism by which RNA is made. 
If there is no RNA encoding the enzyme, then no enzyme is made. For the cell to resume making more enzyme, the product must not be in excess. When the product is used so that it is no longer in excess, then there is not enough product molecules to bind the DNA, and the process of synthesizing the enzyme is restored. When the result of control by synthesis is stopping the making of an enzyme, somewhere along its pathway, then we call it, enzyme repression. When the result is an increase in the making of an enzyme, we call it, enzyme induction. Sort of the inverse of enzyme repression. To remember this, remember that enzyme repression responds to excess of enzymatic product, whereas enzyme induction responds to an abundance of substrate that needs to be metabolized. The difference between control by synthesis and the other two mechanisms you reviewed before, where inhibitors were used, is that control by synthesis works at the level of the genetic code, making this type of control an exquisite way for the cell to control how much enzyme is available. Remember that control by synthesis is genetic in nature, whereas competitive and non-competitive inhibition are not. Now it's time to check your progress. You'll know if you have learned the material so far. If you can do the following, differentiate between catabolism and anabolism with examples. Don't repeat what the textbook says. Instead, use your own words. Describe the difference between APAO enzyme and a hollow enzyme. Summarize the direct and indirect control mechanisms that regulate enzymes. Now, don't forget to keep working on LearnSmart so that you retain the content after you have studied it.